Well, the Bruins still can't solve the Gonzaga equation. It's been a couple of times, and we're going to figure it out eventually. Just not in the Maui Invitational. Or earlier this year. Rumor has it Anton Watson still hasn't missed. And then if I keep this intro going any longer, they're going to call me for a foul. You are Locked On UCLA. Your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Well, the Maui Invitational comes to an end. We can explain all that goofy funness, but we're going to start with UCLA Gonzaga. 69-65, Gonzaga knocks off the Bruins in a close game late. Again, this time in an exciting November battle. As we welcome you to Locked On UCLA, Zach Anderson, Yoxheimer, exhausted, up late, super tired, but we stayed up and caught the end of that game because, hey, the voice is gone. All right, so what did we like to see and what did we not see from UCLA? Well, one, we saw a lot more fouls than we saw points, mostly from UCLA's big men. If you think about it, if you combine the fouls from Bona, four, Nuba, five, Bedeke, two, you can get 11 fouls. And then with Devin Williams' appearances, Brandon Williams' appearances, UCLA went deep in the bench because it was their third game in three nights. Third, second of the three to go down to the wire against the top 10, top 11 foe. And they they fought. This is a game that could have been much worse in the first half, and the Bruins found themselves down four. They were up in front a little bit early in the second half, only for Gonzaga to take a bigger lead. And it was UCLA who made a late run, 8-2 to two spurt to get within three. And all of a sudden, hey, you had the ball down three, 50 seconds left, 35 seconds left. Contested Jay by Andrews to get within one. And Gonzaga hit some free throws to close out the game, where it was largely UCLA hitting their free throws, 31, 23 for 31, being outshot by the Zags, getting dominated on the glass until the Bruins at the end were able to find ways to get the boards, force turnovers, including that steal to get the ball back, and win this game. What happened in this game that went wrong? One, Adem Bona had a hard time getting himself asserted because he had four personal fouls, had to sit in foul trouble. And Aymada had three minutes, three fouls. You're getting the story of this game. Kenny Nuba, five fouls in 14 minutes. Devin Williams, he even came in this game. Brandon Williams played seven minutes. He picked up two fouls. If you stepped on the court, you probably breathed and picked up a foul. And if you did it, you're Dylan Andrews, who went two for 15 in 38 minutes. No turnovers, but two for 15. And he did not have a good shooting night. Absolutely did not have a good shooting night. Where UCLA, you look on the other end, all right, yeah, Nemhard, Nemhard, who had a 3-for-12 performance, right? One of their key players. Except you look at Anton Watson, the 25% career three-point shooter, hits three threes, is 14 from 15 from the floor, 32 points, where overall this game was just kind of bonkers in different ways. Gonzaga missed 12 free throws. You make five more of those, this game looks completely different down the stretch. But the Bruins are scrappy. They found themselves in a game twice with the ball to tie or take the lead in the final 50, 30 seconds of a game on a neutral floor against a top 10 team. Basically, right? Gonzaga is top 10, top 11 in the country. Marquette went to the finals and nearly took down Purdue. And UCLA hung with them tough after they smacked Kansas with the benches clearing fracas there. And then they almost took down Purdue and Zach Eady. So UCLA is competing with the best teams. They're just taking their licks and they're taking their losses. That Cade certainly hasn't gotten his, his feet under him yet. 11 minutes, six points. Still, we want him to get a little bit more. Mata just has not gotten a lot of flow yet. The Bruins don't keep him close to the basket. We're waiting for UCLA to use him in a different role offensively. Mack grinds it out, makes crazy shots, apparently just flipping it up in the air. And anything hits the bottom of the net. But still, he's a little inefficient. Stefanovic, I'm not sure why UCLA didn't hand him the ball when they're down three and say, shoot the ball. Shoot the ball when you're down three with your best three-point shooter who just hit a big dagger one to make it a three-point game and make him shoot the basketball. If he's that leader, give him the ball. And Stefanovic, who played 40 minutes, he played. He was one of four players on the floor to play 40 minutes. The other three were on Gonzaga's side of the floor. But for Stefanovic, you hand him the ball with his 16 points and say, shoot this down three. I don't care what ugly shot you take. 
you shoot it and try to get us the tie, unless you're you're not. But a contested two point jumper from someone who is not hitting shots that night. I know Andrews played really well against Marquette, a little bit banged up, third game in three nights. You give that ball to Stefanovic and let him hit the brick or hit the shot, right? You let him take that nasty shot to tie the game. And there will be times Andrews has to take that shot. It might, more often than not this year, make that shot. Just not three days, three games in three nights when you're a little off and you're playing 38 minutes on the third game when Cronin was just trying to find anybody, anybody to get some offense for a team who was struggling against Gonzaga. A scrappy game wasn't a super high-scoring game. This isn't the Drew Timmies of old. This is the UCLA with an injured Nuba and no Bona. This is an interesting game. And considering Gonzaga is the number two seed looking in the West, I believe, which is the L.A. regional, UCLA has got to stack up some wins. And, hey, think about it, November a year ago. They went to Vegas, took two L's, rebounded, took two straight months, and found themselves building for a Pac-12 championship. That's not what's going to happen this year. They, they are going to take another loss before the next two months are up, I believe. I, can, I think that's a fair assumption for me to say. But what I am saying is I'm more impressed by the Bruins after their Maui Invitational run where they went one and two. They can learn a lot from this. And we wonder, hey, yes, they could have gone two and one. They could have gone two and one and got to the championship game maybe. Maybe one and two, third place. I don't know. Still, here they are, scrappy, ups and downs, 28-4 to four leading in Shamanad. All of a sudden, they cut it to 10 in the second half. They were a chance to tie this game late, force it overtime potentially, and lose it late. Up 12 against Marquette, and then all of a sudden they go on a 17-0 run. Impressive ups and downs. It's going to be that type of year for UCLA basketball, where I certainly believe they're a top 25 team. They're going to have to earn their way in the tournament. They're going to have to earn their way in the top 25, being 4-2 and two and missing two opportunities to get marquee neutral site wins, which helps you in Ken Palm ratings, helps you in net ratings, helps you in all these different marquee places that the committee looks at if they want to get super analytical with Ken Palm. They want to get super analytical later in the year when the net comes out. Remember, that's more the the, the, the thing they use instead of the RPI. But even though RPI is out there too, wins on the road and everything as well, or away from home, quad one wins, the Bruins squander two opportunities to get those. That could help your seeding line up the tournament a little bit better for them in March. Dare they make it, which I believe they will unlike Jeff Goodman believes in his preseason prediction, or to try and get yourself some confidence to close out games. They've competed. This team can certainly compete. Now it's to close out games and win them, even when they're not on their best night. UCLA out-rebounded, out-shot, and pretty much outplayed in different pieces of the game, and yet they still were that close to Gonzaga. Wasn't exactly a super classic like it was in March, or the last couple of marches in 21 and earlier this year in 23, still the Bruins and Gonzaga went down to the wire and had a fun time watching it. That's just how these teams pretty much play. Four straight seasons these teams have played, and three of them have gone down to the final 30 seconds where UCLA had the ball potentially to tie or take the lead against the Zags. One of these days, they'll get them. They will. I believe it. I absolutely do. But yet the Bruins go one and two to finish off the Maui Invitational, and then they play UC Riverside in about a week. So we'll, we'll talk more about that for here on Locked on UCLA. Coming up later, 69-65, the Zags win. Anton Watson, 32 points on 15 shots, only missing one shot from the field. The Bruins led by Mack with 16 and Stefanovic with 16. Bona puts in 11 points, four rebounds. I think Stefanovic had a pretty solid night, getting some points late, making everything happen, playing every minute in a game that was the third straight day of playing Super long travel going to Hawaii. That's a lot of burden for one Andrews and mostly Stefanovic. That Cronin's already tightening the rotation that much. Even though he had to go deep into his bench this game, he's doing that. Doesn't have a lot of guards he truly trusts. Stefanovic may never leave the floor again. Be aware of that. Even if he has five fouls, they, they might find a way to sneak him on, put on a mustache, and, and pretend he's a different player. I don't know. You're right. Stefanovic will never leave the floor, it seems like. And he did not do so against Gonzaga. These two teams playing like it's a March Madness-style game with what they left it on the floor. Four players for Gonzaga starting five played 30 or more minutes. That's how much it meant to Mark Few and how much he did not have the depth in his team to win this game 
until he, well, I mean, he did win this game, but didn't have the depth he wanted probably later in this for the season. UCLA clearly has a little bit more depth to the roster. They're just not developed yet to contribute and lead this team to victory over Gonzaga's starting five. That's where they're at. No Strother, no Timmy, but up and down the lineup, Gonzaga, a little more stacked in their experience at the, the top heavy part of the lineup. UCLA, they've got a little bit more. Now they've just got to develop it, enhance it, get that rotation, experiment more with the big zone defense, score with the double big offense, and find ways for the guards to score consistently and efficiently all around. Mack and Andrews, 25 shots to get 21 points is not going to beat any team. It is not going to do so. I, rep- I applied their effort. They fought hard. They weren't going to make jumpers on the third straight day of a game. Third straight day with games all the way on the islands. That's going to happen. You're not going to have your best shooting nights, and they competed. This team, like most McCormick teams, like most UCLA teams, competes to the very end. So you got to love them. I enjoy them. And coming up next on Locked on UCLA, we're going to, one, talk about, hey, UCLA women are playing UConn pretty soon. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about UCLA Cal. And we'll overall talk about the likes of this Maui tournament, what it means from an overall picture. We'll get to that in upcoming Locked on UCLA episodes. Hey, and happy Thanksgiving on Locked on UCLA. Prize Picks, the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Hey, they're also the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just you against the numbers. Instead of bad like thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, rah, rah, rah. You, you can pick more or less on two to six stat player projections and watch the winnings roll in. Because with basketball and football season, crossover season, you can play in the specials league where you can combine combo projections for LeBron's 10.5 point combo, 10.5 combo of three-pointers made and receptions with Travis Kelsey. You get that together, you're going to have a fun night watching multiple games. And the Thanksgiving holidays right around the corner, bam, enjoy that. And then you want to go with your community plays, check out how you play alongside of the big-time players like Meek Mill, the rapper and comedian Andrew Schultz. Hey, go check that out as well. They've got injury insurance as well. They're the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. Check it out. PricePicks.com says locked on college. Use the code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. PricePicks.com says locked on college. $100 match with checking out Price Picks. Daily fantasy sports made easy. And check out LinkedIn Jobs because every potential new hire feels like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available, which is why you want to check out LinkedIn Jobs, the right people for your team faster and for free by using screening questions to get the right candidates to interview and then eventually hire. All that combined is why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus lady competitors. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Well, that's going to wrap it up for Locked On UCLA. Zach Anderson, the Oxheimer, signing off. Wishing you all, friends, family, everything, all you listeners, viewers, thank you, all UCLA Bruins family. If you're not a UCLA fan, thanks for viewing anyways. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy with your family, and thank you for your support. UCLA, they'll have another football game to wrap up 2023, as up and down as it's been. And remember, be thankful UCLA kicked SC's butt. And then UCLA basketball will recap all that coming up next on Locked On UCLA for the Maui Invitational as a whole. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Locked On UCLA. Go Bruins. Happy Thanksgiving.